Olivia Knox, president of the White House Correspondents Association, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me on the show. The case of Jim Acosta, it resulted in the White House demanding new rules in the press room. Will you be following those rules? Well, as I said, when the White House uh, issued those new rules, we had no role in discussing them. We had no role in elaborating them. Um, and the tradition of follow-up questions by reporters is decades old, probably longer than that even. And so uh, I fully expect reporters to continue to ask questions, tough questions, follow-up questions, and, uh, and do our constitutionally protected role. So do you um, consider the action of Jim Acosta in any sense out of line when he refused handing over the microphone? Uh, I, I don't. I think that this is the sort of adversarial relationship that the founders of the United States envisioned between the press corps and the people in power. Uh, what happened in that press conference was not uh, especially unusual. And, uh, and I, I, as I said in my, in, my, uh, in my remarks after the White House confiscated his hard pass, his Secret Service pass, I, I thought that was a disproportionate response by this White House. So the big picture, your association are uh, set to monitor the working conditions for the reporters covering the White House. What has that been like during this presidency? Well, there are really two, two aspects of this. One is the day-to-day -day logistical conversation that the White House Correspondents Association has with this White House or any White House. It's a conversation about things like, uh, will there be a press charter to a major summit? Uh, those conversations have gone pretty well, actually, uh, in the Trump administration. Um, adversarial, to be sure. We always want more than they want to give us. But that's been reasonably good. The, the part that's been very unsettling is the president's public rhetoric calling us enemies of the people, for instance. You know, I've, I've, I've been doing this for a long time, a uh, couple decades. And while I've been uh, assaulted by partisans of both major American parties, there's still a difference between pre-February 2017 and post-February 2017 when the president declared us the enemies of the people. And part of that is very personal. Uh, a couple of days after the president made those remarks, I was driving my son, I think it was to soccer practice, and he burst into tears. And I, I was alarmed and I asked him why he was crying. And he said, you know, Papa, is, is President Trump going to put you in prison? That hits home. And that kind of rhetoric hits home. And when he invites his supporters to jeer us at, at, at press rallies, it's, it's unsettling. Not unprecedented, but, but, but unsettling. But that kind of rhetoric, you know, uh, as a half Frenchman, I appreciate the irony that it's drawn from the French Revolution. But uh, I also am aware that it's been, it's been uh, used by authoritarian leaders throughout history to justify some pretty serious abuses. What's his purpose, you think? Why does he want to have this relationship with the media? Uh, because as a, as a matter of politics, this is a president who likes to be in a fight. He doesn't like it when things are a referendum just on him. Uh, as you saw in the recent midterm elections, you know, his, uh, the Democrats made historic gains, the, the largest since the Watergate era. He doesn't like being, um, being by himself on the stage. He needs an opponent. He needs a Hillary Clinton. He needs that primary field of Republicans that he can beat up on. Um, he does better in that kind of situation. And so for political purposes, you know, casting us a a as an enemy, casting himself as sort of the champion of people who dislike elites and somehow we've, we've become uh, cast uh, among the elites, he benefits from that kind, of, uh, that kind of adversarial relationship. So I think that that's what he's doing, uh, that, he, that he's casting us uh, as an enemy almost the way he would attack uh, his rivals for the presidency. But listening to Trump and many other Republicans, they believe established media are or have been openly biased against Trump. Do you think that could justify some of his rhetorics? I don't think there's a justification for calling the news media the enemy of the people. You know, uh, I've been on the business end of presidents complaining about news coverage for probably two decades. Um, but no, there's no, there's no real justification for calling us the enemies of the people. I mean, again, this was a, a, a phrase that dates back to the French Revolution. It was used to justify uh, mass executions. It was then harnessed by uh, uh, despots in the Soviet Union and in China and elsewhere. No, I don't think there's a real, there's a real excuse. The, 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 the president's always going to be uh, in conflict with the coverage. It's just not great when the president is also in conflict with the reporters. And this, this president has used that for political gain. So you don't think it's, it's a justified reaction, but would you say that media is openly biased? 
No, I would not say that the news media in America today is, is openly biased. Um, there's a difference between an adversarial relationship, which is built into the principles of the American Constitution, and, and an oppositional one or a partisan one. I don't think that the news media is, uh, is, being, uh, is acting in a way that makes it a partisan actor. I just don't think so. Okay, anyway, as it is now, many of Trump voters have lost faith in, in established media. Some may be more or less immune to whatever you would say. How do you work with that? Well, uh, well so I would say a couple things here. One is that, in, in my experience, uh, a lot of these folks say that they don't trust the media, but if they come across a story in the Washington Post or the New York Times or CNN or, or some other outlet that that they feel reinforces their beliefs. They're happy to share it, and they're happy to suddenly find new faith, new trust in the news media. So I'm a little bit skeptical of that. But you've got to remember that uh, the dislike of the, of the news media and, and suspicion of the news media is not a Trump phenomenon. I mean, he's elevated it, obviously, but it's been a decades-long process. Um, and so, uh, you know, we, we've had to work with this before. The, the best argument I would make, the best thing we can do, I think, is to keep sort of keep at our jobs, keep working, keep uh, covering the presidency, keep covering Congress. The, the best remedy for this stuff is just to keep soldiering on. And, and I hope that people who are watching and listening to this program now will understand that you would much rather have a free and independent news media than not, even if we drive you crazy sometimes, even if we get things wrong sometimes. Um, there's no other way to, to hold these really, really, really powerful people and institutions to account.